Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be doing is changing and modifying the kill Z volume and zone. So what happens now is if you fall through the floor or fall out of the map, the player is just going to die, the axe will be destroyed. Now this might be good for you if you have a respawn system, but you just might not also want this. What you want is what we're going to do instead today, which is if you fall out of the map or you fall too far down, the player is just going to be teleported to their last location before they started falling. So if I hit play, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what happens by default. So if you fall, you're just going to die and get destroyed like so. So the player just dies and then nothing happens. So what we're going to do is now have it so the player will get teleported back to their last known location. So let's say we're here, we fall off, what's going to happen is the player isn't going to die, they're just going to get teleported back up. And if we were over here, they're going to fall off, not die, they get teleported back to where they were before they fell off. So this is what we're going to be going with today, I think it's quite a cool little concept which someone has requested as well, so they get teleported back, kind of like in GTA 5 I think their example was, but basically you fall out of the world, you get teleported back, and this can be used anywhere really. So if you walk too far out of the world or the map bounds as well, you get teleported back. However you want to implement this, this is a great system for you to use. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually disable the kill Z volume or the kill Z zone so that the player doesn't die when they fall out of the map. So we're going to go to the world settings to do this and if you don't have the world settings go up to window in the top left and just press world settings and then what we can do is we can search for kill Z and then you can just change this to a really low number or what I'm going to do is instead search for enable world bounds and just untick that. So now it's not going to check to see if the player falls out of the map so if we press play, what should happen is the player should just continue falling forever and they won't die as you can see here, which is then perfect because now they're going to fall into our own custom volume which will then teleport them back up. So let's now create the system for the player to spawn back where they previously were. So what I mean by that is we're now going to get the location of the player before they start falling. So let's open up our character blueprint, which for me is content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. In here I'm going to right click, add a custom event and I'm going to name this save player location so that makes the most sense for me now if you do have a save and load system you might already have something called save player location so you could do this save safe location or something so basically where the player is going to spawn what we also want to do now is create a new variable and i'm going to name this safe location and as it's a location we want this to be a vector variable compile and save that and again it's safe location because this is where the player can now spawn in after they've fallen out of the world and what we're going to do is right click underneath our custom event get is falling from the character movement like that then hold down B left click to get a branch connecting that into there the condition being is falling now the reason we're doing this is because we don't want to set the player's location if they are falling because if they're falling they could be falling out of the map so it's then not a safe location for them to spawn in and also you don't really want them to spawn in midair if they were jumping while this is happening so we're going to come out of false, so if they are not falling, we're then just going to set safe location. So we now know that this is a safe location for the player to spawn in. And where is this location going to be? Just where the player currently is, so get actor location. Connect that into there, like so. So now that is going to actually save the player's current location for where they are, but we want to make sure we're doing this just before they fall. So what I'm going to do is not actually detect when they fall, I'm just going to do this every so often, just so it does happen before they fall as well. So if we hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that to both true of the branch and the set safe location. You can set this duration to whatever you want. I'm going to set it to one second because this won't be too demanding and then we also get a nice one second interval between every time we save the player's location. So again, all this is doing is just setting that location so it's not going to be demanding at all. Again, make this as quick or as long as you want, so it could be every 0.1 seconds, so it's constantly doing it all the time, or every half a second, or every two seconds, whatever you want. Our completed, what we're going to do is just call a function save player location. So it's then going to save the player's location. So what it's going to do is set the location, one second later, set it again, one second later, set it again, and do all that continuously. So we're also going to hold down P, left click to get event begin play. Out of this, we just want to call the function save player location just to start it off when we begin the game. And that is all we need to do in the player's blueprint because again, what this is doing is just making sure we now have a location for the player to spawn back into after they start falling out of the map. So we'll compile, save, and close that. And now all that's left to do is create the volume in which the player falls into for them to then spawn back up and actually set that location. So I'm going to right click, 
go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this one teleport zone, as that makes the most sense for me. This is the zone they're going to be in when they teleport. So again, name this whatever makes sense for you, but that works for me. And I'm going to open that up. In here, we're going to add a component without being a box collision, just so the player has something to actually collide into. Compile and save that. I'm not going to make any changes to this at the moment. You can obviously increase it in here, but I'm going to be doing it slightly differently. Then we want to go over to the construction script. So this way the player, or not the player, sorry, you, the developer, have more control over the size and height of this box. So we're going to create a new variable, and I'm going to name this one height, and that is going to be a float. So this is going to be the height of where this is. So if it's minus 1000 Z or minus 2000, whatever you want. And I'm also going to create another one called size, also leaving this as a float. And we're going to compile and save those. Then we're going to drag in a reference to our box collision. Out of this, we're going to set world transform, making sure it's the world transform, not local or not actor. So set world transform, right click the transform and split the structure pin. Right click the location and split that structure pin as well and do the same for the scale. So we should have new transform X, Y, Z, the rotation, which we're not going to change and the new transform scale X, Y, Z as well. The location X and Y we're going to leave as zero and the Z we're going to connect in our height float which we created earlier, like so. And then the rotation again we're going to leave as zero. The scale X and Y is going to be our size float which we created and then the scale Z is also just going to be left as a default of one. Then if we select our height and size variables, we'll start with height first, we're going to change it to instance editable and we're going to do the same for size two. So this just means that you can change it individually for each and every actor, but we don't need to do it for different ones. We just want to be able to do it once we place it in a level. So this is now going to give us more control over the height and size of this box. So the zone size and height in which the player is going to enter for them to be teleported back. Next, we're going to go to the event graph and do the code for actually teleporting the player. So I'm going to delete these three nodes, right click on the box collision, add event, add on component begin overlap. Then if we drag this up, I'm going to drag out of other actor and cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. But for you, this could be first, third, or whatever you've named it. Then as our character here, what we're going to do is simply get safe location or whatever you named the variable which we created earlier. And then also as character, we're going to set actor location. And this location is going to be our safe location, which we've just got here. So when they enter this zone, we're getting the current safe location in the player's blueprint and setting the player's location to that location there. So again, we're setting this location here every one second in a, when the player is in a safe place to respawn back into. And this is just going to put them to that location. So if we compile, save, close that, that is all the code now done for us. So if we drag in our teleport zone blueprint here, I'm just going to reset that to 000 there just to keep a track of it. And the height I'm going to put as minus 1500, as that's going to work for me on this map size for me, because at the moment my map is just this big, so mine doesn't go down any further. If your map does go down a bit, for example, they go underground, you will probably want to lower this a bit further. Obviously just mess about with it and get it working perfect for you and the size I'm also just going to put as 100, maybe even 200, like so. Again, this is just something which you're going to have to change to be perfect for your map. So you'll see that this, as I increase and decrease this, it increases the size, and as I increase and decrease this, it lowers and heightens the volume, like so. So again, minus 1500 and 200 will be good for me, as I, when I go into the map, I can see that there's a good distance between the two there, so the player isn't going to be able to go here, so it doesn't matter, and the map doesn't go out here either. So when the player falls, they will enter this zone here. If they don't enter the zone, they will just continue falling forever and ever until they close the game. But let's hit play and test this out. So if I just walk around up here, we can wait a couple seconds and the location should be set. So I just stand here, then jump off. Once I reach it, I should get teleported back to where I was just standing. And if I were to walk over here, the same thing should happen. When I fall off, I'm going to be teleported back up there to where I just was. And this is working perfectly, as you can see here. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we've set up a zone in which when the player falls into it, instead of dying, they're now going to be teleported back into the map in a safe location where they just were. So again, it's not going to be a random point. It's going to be where they just were before they actually fell out of the map, but in a safe location where they're not going to fall again, unless they obviously jump off like I am here. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. 
And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.